right, let us do the thing, Julie. So, probably won't be a too long of a meeting unless our conversations in the uh, previous stuff or the stuff that we have today go extra long. Um, which could be the case, but regardless, um, in terms of updates on my end before we get into the previous stuff, I have started adding some of the equipment guides update to World Anvil. I've instructed the team to start adding that as well, so the update should be transitioning there, and by the time it's transitioned, uh, the release should be out as well. Uh, transitioned fully, that is. Um, so, we're getting progress. Um, outside of that, mine is instantly blanking and I hate it. Um, let's see here. You know, my mind just doesn't work right now. We're just gonna we're just gonna go to the thing that I know is pretty important next. Um, which I don't know if, how much time you have, Pi, so we're gonna go look at yours. Um, your rework for sewing rumors. Yeah. Alright. Like like it says, uh I didn't actually write out mechanics, I just mm -hmm. kinda threw down bullet points. Yeah. So So I think um, overall, a lot of the, the base ideas you have here are pretty good. Um, I think if we, instead of doing it with the traditional every day gives you plus two, so capping out a plus ten, we just make it so it's a more, I want to say exponential, well, actually an exponential cost. So one day might be uh, plus one, two days still plus one, three days might be a plus two, six days might be a plus three, you know, so on and so forth. So it, it builds up to that cap. Uh, keeping the cap is fine. That's fine. But uh, making it linear so people still have to hit those really expensive days to hit the, what they really wanted to do. That's fine. Uh, this is for sewing rumors. Yeah, uh, Pi's update to rumors. It's true. I would go to it, but that would give people the link, and I've already revealed things I shouldn't reveal. The the link is literally just a commenter link. I, yeah. It's it's not in any of the any of the Cyric, uh folders. Nice. It's in my personal drive. I don't give a fuck. There's nothing in there that we care about. Cool. Cool. Go nuts. All right. Well, uh, I probably should um put this on Firefox, shouldn't I? I'm showing the right thing. There we go. Okay. Whoop. Why are you not centered? That's better. All right, just so so the recording can have view of the uh, the intended updates. Yeah, it my the way that I tend to post links is every single one of them is a commenter link mm -hmm. without fail. There you go. All right. Well, um, outside of that a update, I would say um, I'm just reading through this again, just to make sure my mind's all caught up to speed what I read when he first posted it. Um, I definitely think the addition of a clear explanation of what they're wanting to, to impact is, is solid. Um, I think making it so it coincides with the influence cost would work pretty well as well. Um, what I mean by that is if we have them say, I want this to impact everyone within this village, or everyone within this this, uh, let's just go big, so from very small to very big, uh, everyone within this country, um if they're wanting to affect larger and larger things, we further increase that cost so, at base it might be like five, if they're doing like just one village, um but it might go all the way up to like 30 if they're doing a country, and it might be 60 if they're doing two countries as an example. Um, just so there's more variance there with the influence cost. And I know a lot of people aren't spending their influence somewhat tied to the fact that they don't really know what to spend it on. Um, there's other reasons for that as well. But if we make it clear 
more options that they can use it for, especially for downtime days, for the more political side of things, I think that will definitely help that. Yeah, because as, as it stands, the only cost for influence for basically any political anything is literally just, I want to increase my role. And also, yeah. uh, I want to not face the consequences of this action. Thanks. Yeah. Which... That's one influence. Absolutely yeah. not. And I think for the not facing the consequence of your action, I think we set that to a DC. So if players want to do that at the base cost of, you know, like one influence or what have you, um, we give them a DC of, say, uh, eight plus the proficiency plus, or eight plus their bonus in. Deception, as an example, or persuasion, or, or whatever skill they're using for the rumor uh, spreading. Um, and that sets the DC for people who want to look into who is actually the source of the spread. It could be like 10, or it could be higher than 8, and just as an example, it's we set a base DC, and they can spend further influence to boost that higher. To just make it harder to figure it out, I get you. Yeah. Um, just because... There should be some way to determine, mechanically speaking, on paper, how to determine who is the source. And I think part of that could be tied in that as well, where we list a downtime cost for players so they can search who the source might be. Uh, just so it's not just like, hey, I want to roll for this. Cool. And then, hey, I failed. Can I roll for this again? Uh, having some form of cost tied to it. Uh, which would also go into our end of things too. Uh, something, something to add to that is the idea of false positives. Mm -hmm. uh, just because, uh, depending on, like, what organization or person is actually spreading these rumors, there they can theoretically have false positives as to who might actually have done it, or mm -hmm. definitely more accurately there's more options as to who would have done it. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, I think um, a gradient range uh, with both failures to produce false positives and uh, success is producing it. So, like, if you succeed by hitting the number on the spot, you might get a, a couple options. Yeah. Um, if you succeed by, like, plus 5, plus 10, you get on the nose who did it. Uh, thus, giving some more indication of you need to do more research, you need to do more investigation into this, um, giving more room for wiggles. And then if someone rolls like a natural one on their check, they get a false oh, positive. It is, it is absolutely this person. They, yeah. This person isn't even in the country. It was them. Yeah, something like that. Um, and also failing by a certain amount, they would get a similar result of false positives. But they wouldn't have the real person in the list. And we would not tell them that, because these rolls would be in the Hidden Dice Roll channel. Secret rolls. Secret. Ooh. But, you know, uh, looking pretty good so far, I'd say. I, one of the things that I think I wanted the most opinion on was uh, that. The third bullet point. Just allowing proficiency to, to determine the, the stat that you're using for the skill check. Just because I figure that uh, some people, like, pr proficiency is being trained in knowing how to do this. Mm -hmm. And since this is over the span of multiple days that you're spreading these rumors, I would imagine that it would be, like, being trained in it would make sense that you would be able to basically pick and choose how you want to do it. And you, you would just know what might be more effective, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, the idea... I wanted to opinions, because that's not something that's in any town type yet, so. Yeah, the idea is interesting. Um, it does lessen the impact of charisma characters, which is a dumb stat. Because a lot of these actions for, like, political wielding will be tied to charisma, so if we allow it to be other options, that will lessen the potency of charisma. No, I get you. Um, so well, perhaps a feat, like a guile feat, that lets you do that. Because guile's man. tied towards political actions, skill-based stuff, and downtime. Um, I just thought. 
I yeah. thought about boots. But if, if people want it tied to the base option for sewing rooms specifically, I can see it working. I just, I think that particular thing would require more opinions on it than just, you know, you and I. So if anyone wants to talk on that subject, feel free. I mean, you can feel free to talk regardless, but you know, if you have any opinions on this, one way or the other. Daylight same times do be nasty, yes. Pain is pain. Did we go over any equipment guide stuff? Yes, uh, you were not here. It was very brief. Um, essentially making solid progress. The equipment guide, I've instructed the team, and I've also put some of it on the World Anvil already, specifically the crafting page, uh, equipment, that page itself on the World Anvil has been adding the new rules in the guide to it. Um, we have not updated uh, the Discord saying that this has been a thing, just because it's not fully up, up on that page yet. Um, but I the, the guide is being slowly transitioned to World Anvil, and by the time it's on World Anvil fully, uh, the guide will also be released in a PDF format, so people can use both. Yeah, so progress. Very, very good progress. And uh, I know charisma, intelligence, um, sometimes wisdom are pretty heavily used in downtimes. Um, Mostly intelligence. Yeah, yeah. Um, there will be additional options. One of the things I'll be working on once the equipment guide is done, unless someone else wants to do it, like Pi, since you do political things, um, would be the criminal downtime options. Um, um, I know that ND is working on criminal stuff. Nice. Events, so I will probably get with her on that at some point. Cuckoo, could you? But that, that is a focus I want to work on after I'm done with the equipment guide, just so we can get that aspect of things set up. And if someone wants to do it sooner, most appreciated. But it's on my docket after equipment guide. But uh, any other opinions on the uh, Intwiz Charisma thing? Uh, not always. Not uh, always. In intelligence tends to be a stat that you take because there are more intelligence skills, and in Syriac there are more intelligence options than any other mental stat. Um, people take wisdom not because they uh, they need it for intelligence builds, but because uh, wisdom saving throws are the most common mental save. Mm. So having wisdom... Uh, for saving throws and for um, perception uh, are always going to be things that people are going to be taking. Just true. Uh, that is an option, or like he's saying. I'm not sure if this is what they're meaning, but uh, as an alternative to saying the feet provide it, one could have, um, if one were to use a different stat than the base charisma, a drawback would be applied of sorts. Or maybe there might be a higher chance for complications. So if you'd roll a one, a base, you'd be rolling like a one to four at base to cause the complications. I would say that that would be no. something that if we implement it, I would say probably relegate the you can use something other than charisma to a feat, just because uh, people, I, I think people would feel better about having to build for that and plan around said complications than just, oh hey, I, I, have, I just have a, I have a plus three to my wisdom and I have a plus two to charisma. I'm trained, I can do this. Oh well, uh, me doing this fucks me. Hmm. Fair, fair. Yeah, 
so far I think the the best idea would be to implement it via guile feat. Yeah. Yeah. That said, I I am going to in a couple of days, uh, probably throw uh, this document into a suggestion box just so. Yeah. We can get some player based opinions. On it. Yeah, definitely. So. I mean, if we weren't doing that, I would have probably put this up on World Anvil already, but we need to discuss things, and players need yeah. to hear about it, and I was like, I, I, I'll hold my horses. That players are going to be using far more than, than people. Uh, or NPCs, not people, Jesus. Yeah. Players are, players are people. Pie. It's what true. About? <laughs> so, I'd, I'd rather get their opinions than, than anything else. It's I get the feeling it's going to be one hell of a fucking threat, though. <laughs> What yeah. gives you that idea? Oh, I can think of several, several people that will have several opinions on this, but I won't name names. Yes. We're being recorded. I mean, all right. Um, but yeah, no, cool. Looks looks pretty good. We can get opinions via it on suggestion form from player side of things. Um, anything else on that topic before we move on to the next? No, Joke, you are person, because you are singular. Duh. Alright, then. Alright, uh, in that case, next topic. Thank you, Legacy, for giving me topics, because I couldn't find them. Um, I'm blind. Uh, next thing on the docket, researching spells update. Um, I know this was heavily discussed, heavily debated, uh, somewhat heated sometimes, in the suggestion box. We've already discussed it somewhat here. Um... So at this point, we're just looking back at it to see if we want to apply everything or if there's more small tweaks we want to do before releasing to World Anvil. Um, big thing right now is that, as it stands, Wizards and other Spellback users at a base have about a sixth of the spells known as other classes. Um, even with the changes I suggested, uh, it's still pretty low. Um, currently, we're looking at an update of these users get a much larger base known spell list and will be able to learn faster um, for the early level spells as an alternative or like going back to school as an additional option to spell research. Um, keeping the, the base value for like higher tier research as is where it's pretty long and, and whatnot but allowing people to do uh, basically going back to university to study for these new early level spells. Um, the exact numbers are not exactly in my head right now because I am a banana, but let's see if we can't find that. Let's see here. Where is I think it's this one? Pretty sure that's the link to it. Um, yeah, so the, the base values for higher level spells, so spells fifth and above, those ones will still require you to essentially... Uh, the, the whole point of that initial top research was tied to the idea that you are learning a spell from scratch. You're not, like, going back to university, you're not doing any of this, you're trying to uh, test and probe and make uh, weird little experiments to determine how to cast the spell. So, how to cast a Circle of Death, as an example. You have no other way to learn how to do it. There's no scrolls, there's no spell book, there's no book teaching how to do it. It's just all trial and error. Um, that's why the days took so long. Uh, the suggestion... It was given is that the early level spells, levels one through four, tend to be a bit easier, tend to be a bit more common, especially in a high magic world, which Zeric is. Um, so adding an additional option for university tutelage. Um, and one of the benefits that can be applied to factions that are tied to magic learning, such as uh, the Tyrus Academy, um, would be allowing higher level spells to be tutelaged. So, you know, going to university for cheaper days. 
Um, we just need to work that into the updates for the Pyrus Academy's action update. Um, but essentially allowing people to do these these wibbly wobbly options for like really fast learnings for things that they can just pick up a book and read versus trial and error experimentation. Uh, so that's a big update. Um, I believe for that one we were deciding on uh, either one day or two days. It was like leaning between the two. Um, per spell level, for the early levels, for tutelage. Um, so if you're learning a first level spell, it'll just take you one day of downtime, and then the listed fifty gold. Um, and then for like second level, be two days, hundred gold, three days, hundred fifty gold, so on and so forth, and capped out fourth level. Um, that's just for ease and whatnot. Uh, due to the fact that they are so commonplace that one could probably find a spell book on how to cast these spells in, like, a library in most capital cities. Like, you know, Casting Evocation Spells for Dummies! Volume 3. As an example. Um, <clears throat> outside of that, though, another big thing that was discussed that I think the values on will work would be change the base values of spells known from Wizard and other spellback users, which I mentioned at the beginning of this. Um, from the simple uh, two per level. So you level up, you get two additional spells known to be, uh, what was it like? Proficiency plus intelligence modifier thing, so, something pretty freaking large, um, which when calculated from early levels, it's not. It's a pretty nice boof, but at level twenty, it does hit about where you'd want wizards to be. Uh, it's more than just proficiency, but it's the actual numbers are in that link I posted. I just don't remember them off the top of my head, and you know, I, I can actually click the link. It's a player link. I can just, just scroll up, see what my numbers were. Um, let's see here. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I am blind. I don't remember things sometimes, which is why I like to have things written down. All right, here's the numbers, I'm pretty sure. All right. Uh, intelligence score plus six, but grant nine plus intelligence modifier, minus spell level and higher spells known per level, uh, and keep the plus one per lowest level. So essentially... Um, at the beginning, you get intelligence score plus six for several spells known. So level one, right out the gate, wizard, artifice, uh, alchemist, any other spellbook user like the binder class would have their casting score plus six. I believe all of them so far, the spellbook users are all intelligence, so it would be intelligence plus six. Um, and that's the score. So if you have an 18, it'd be 24 for several spells known. That's pretty close to hitting the um, druid, cleric, similar prepared caster spells known that, you know, don't actually have spell books. Um, and then whenever they would level up, they would gain 9 plus their intelligence modifier minus spell level in the highest level spells known that per level. So at second level, they would gain uh, 8 plus intelligence modifier. In the case of an 18... Uh, intelligence score, that'd be um, 8 plus 4, so 12. They'd gain 12 additional first level spells. Um, at third level, they would gain one first level spell, because we're keeping the one per lowest level, and they would gain uh, 9 plus intelligence modifier minus spell level, so 7 plus 4 would be 11 second level spells known. And that would continue on at fourth level, where they'd gain 11 plus 1 first. And keep going and going until they, you know, get all the spells known. So eventually it would just be Intelligence Modifier in terms of ninth level spells learned. Um, so those numbers I'm a little, little weary on, just because that could get you nine ninth level spells known right off the bat. Um, so those numbers might need to be somewhat adjusted, but I'm curious about people's opinions on that. I'll just copy the, uh, copy. 
I'll just copy the the uh, wording of what I had typed up, posted here. So all that text at the top, that's just going over details. You can skip it. Uh, the bottom two paragraphs, that's what you want to look at. So the one I was reading off was perhaps at the starting value at one to be intelligence score and starting spells plus six. And there after we go, highest level gain and intelligence modifier. And then, or sorry, the one I was talking about was the alternative if we do that. So there, there's a couple options. And I'm, I'm curious as people's opinions on these options. True. Um, even if we, uh, I don't see anything wrong with it, given the fact that, yeah, you're going to know more spells, but you still have to play the game of uh, do I want to use my, you know, limited spell slots on this instead of this? Like, yeah. You still have to, you, you still have to play the game of shit. I want to use this, but I can't because encounter needs this. Mm -hmm. Which is. I get the feeling you've probably thought over the numbers very thoroughly, so I'm fine with it. Yeah. Bringing wizards in line with other spell casters sounds good, as long as there's no major potential balance issues. Also, as for the downtime activity, the higher level costs being about the same makes sense, while adding the university slash generally available aspect to lower level spells makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the big concern. Uh, another op option would be to be 9 plus int mod minus double spell level, and then minimum 1. That way, higher level spells are even rarer, but that could get a little, a little spicy. Um, yeah, there's there's alternatives, but I, I'm curious what people think if we can get more opinions on that. But uh, definitely good to know. What should be beefed? He means just wizards in general. Oh, yeah. Well, sorks are already going to get buffed just based off the fact that they they still don't have their unchained. Yeah. So, wizard is unchained and is falling behind, which is the problem. It's more of the un. Uh... The cleric needs to be uh, nerfed. Yes. Yeah, Wizard Unchained, I think, is in a good place. It just, the spells known is an issue. And how they gain spells thereafter is an issue. Um, and looking at the numbers, you can see above, it's an issue. You know, D6 is pretty painful, yeah. At least you're not D4, like 3.5 wizards. Oh boy. Where even just being breathed on killed you. Mm -hmm. Imagine being able to die in character creation. It's true. <laughs> Let's play Traveler, guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Legacy, I'm giving you a a, a D. Oh God. I'm giving you a, a D. We are not returning to three point five. Uh, congratulations. You IRL have one hit point plus con mod. Uh, if you have a negative con mod, you die. <laughs> That'll teach you to dump con. Alright, um, so thoughts on the alternative option being the one we go for? Uh, whether that be uh, 9 plus mod minus spell level, or 9 plus mod minus double spell level. I want to get a, a gauge on that. Because this has already been discussed with player side, so I want to get a side of things for, uh, for staff. Before I put on World Anvil. <laughs> Waiting for tippy dabs.
would uh would this affect uh or would this change also affect things like uh um arcane trickster as well and like uh eldritch knight any spellbook users okay they if they have a spellbook it applies to them they do not uh those subclasses are spells known and there you go casters. there you go damn and they almost had more sp spell slots for shield this cast Arcane Tricksters can't even, like... I mean, I guess they can get shield, but they have to use one of their free spells <laughs> to get shield. Arcane tr sorry. Trickster is fun, but, like, man, it just feels bad sometimes. Uh, there were some concerns in that regard, Legacy, but not really that many. It, it, it's true. Like, even if it does become too much, we've been going by the philosophy of it's easy to overpower something and then knock it down, then knock it down and have to figure out where the sweet spot is. Mm -hmm. So, like, it's fine. It's not like anything we can't change if it gets too out of hand. Yeah. All right. I think in that case, I'll be probably putting that up on World Anvil soon. Um, probably not going to give my players access to that in my group today. Uh, just because we're playing in a bit and they're mid combat, but if they survive, then they'll have access to it. That's nice. Um, all right. Let's see here. Next topic: Non-citizen civs have access to adventure DTDs. Yes, they should have access to adventure if they are not playing a citizen class or if they're multi-classed. They should have access to adventure. I believe adventure requires you to be playing an adventuring class. So if, if it doesn't say that, then we can just reword it. We must play the adventuring class. We must have levels in the adventuring class to, to use this downtime. Okay, I did have some questions about that. Give me a SEC. All right. The SEC won't let me be. If the questions you have are the two minor bullet points, um, the first one's answer is no, unless they are a uh, civilian slot. Um, and the second bullet point, should it be civilians, can be normal classes, or any slot type can be any class. Uh, anyone can be any class. They're just dealing with the, the detriments they're in. So... The only difference, slot-wise, really, um, would be what game slots are you allowed to take. Because both can RP, both can do downtime. So that getting raised as a question got me thinking. Because while we were thinking about making slots less restrictive in terms of classes, thus the renaming of civilian to citizens. Yes. But we kind of didn't think too hard about adventuring slot with civilian class and subclasses, which is a bit concerning. Oh, that's why the uh, civilian class was updated to market so, or citizen class was updated to market so, you have to be a civilian slot, to, and you cannot be multi-classed to benefit from many of their citizen, or civilian, it's going to take me a while to get used to this name change. Um, <laughs> you need to be a civilian alone to benefit from their civilian, major civilian benefits. So like the downtime big boons. So basically you need to be a, a downtime character, a roleplay character, to really benefit from civilian citizen. So I'm I'm not too concerned about that. I'll reiterate that this is why I recommended a very explicitly out of character term for the slots. I mean, it's fair. Much less confusing than civilian and citizen. Take care, Pi. No. We do ciao ciao. Definitely be adjusted then, Zyron, yeah. All right. 
Uh, we would just be saying, uh, you must be an adventuring class. But yes, let me put in text some of the concerns that just came to mind. Shoot. To be fair, we also did put in when we first put it out that if you did take an adventure level, you would lose your citizen buffs. Mm -hmm. Like that, that that is the drawback. If you want to do that, you have to take the hit. Also, citizens are D four hit dice, so mm -hmm. you know they're fine. Just don't breathe on them. It's true. It was the the thing was we didn't realize players wanted to be a class but not play in games, which we still need to handle that. Yeah, the slot types are still the same. One slot lets you play in games, one slot lets you play in games only if it allows for your slot type. And those ones are limited. Think of it like a guest star slot rather than a player slot. That does bring up the question that if they are a class and they're a sieve, does that mean seven players in a game? Potentially. Hmm. Depends on what the DM needs for that. They could be like, I need a civilian that is of this subclass, of the citizen class. Mm -hmm. Or they could be like, I need any civilian. Or Yeah, so I said it right that time. Yeah. You two... You two... Today can become a ci a citizen oh. for democracy. Yeah, no, that question is already already a thing. Um, they can be any class they want. They can. I've updated citizen to allow them to be citizen. I did that when we made the change. So regardless of slot type, you can be any class. Would an adventuring player want to be a citizen? I don't know why they would, but the options there. There's certain benefits if you multiclass, though, so I can see people multiclassing into it. I mean, it w it also wouldn't be unheard of, right? Yeah. Of like, uh, y y y you know, the priest retiring from adventure to become like a, you know, help build a church and stuff. Yeah, I mean, the ones that were removed from multiclassing um, were tied, those benefits specifically were tied due to their focus not being on adventuring. So if you take an adventuring class, your focus is now shifted. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, every adventuring would just dip one level in Citizen if I didn't limit these things to get that plus 50% day, to get that um, increase in XP gain for all these major downtime options. Yeah, 
Yeah, making it a uh, civilian slot only, those benefits, I can see doing that, regardless on if you multi-class or not. Yeah, to tie it to slot. That, I thought that was already a thing. It's currently tied to if you are not multi-classed. Mm. You have to be pure citizen to gain the benefits, so I, I can definitely see the change being a thing. Adventures can multi-class in. At least they should be able to. Oh, Droki's not even in the call. That's making it difficult. All right. Um, yeah, I think we just we just have that added there, legacy, and then call it a day in terms of that. We just do that, what Legacy suggested. It should fix the issue. Um, and then we should be good to go. Uh, any other things you had on, on it, Legacy, before we move to the next subject? Let me check. Sorry, got distracted by this. It's all good. Do you not have red berms? Are you a staff member? And staff have red berms? Given we haven't touched the Civ channel in like some time, it probably wasn't. Okay. Yet. Hmm. So the clarification that yes, any slot can have a combination of Civ and normal classes pretty much clarifies both of those smaller questions. Mm -hmm. All right. Choo goo ka choo. All right, the last two things you have on the docket implement as a rule Next somewhere topic would be getting the rules down for slot conversions. Yes. What can be altered as well as wealth or loans. So in terms of alt, uh, things that can be altered, uh, if a slot has been converted, I would say any civilian or citizen levels um, should be allowed a free rebuild into a new class. Um, origin, race, um, or species is what we call it, um, stat array, um, backstory, name, all these major things sh cannot be retconned. They cannot be uh, changed. They cannot be rebuilt. Um, so your, your conversion is you had a lot of time as a civilian running around doing your thing, um, having enough downtime to then convert that you should be good to go 
point. And, like, if, if you're intending to become an adventurer later on, you should be making your character with that in mind. Because you're not going to get a rebuild on some things that might be important to you. So. Which is also kind of why originally we had citizens listed as you'd be of this class to take this subclass. Because it was kind of ensuring that they built correctly for what they want to do later on rather than just building because like hey I'm playing this character now and I'll just get a free retcon later because we're not we're not gonna let them rebuild a lot of their core stats because those are kind of already in the character but if they want to rebuild the citizen class I, that's already allowed and I think it's fine um, and we should definitely add that to the character creation page um, in terms of how it converts I know there were some issues with how we did it last time, so I think we just um, add conversions to the standard roulette. There is that too, yes. They are definitely allowed to retire the civilian, uh, civilian character, their citizen character. Oh, conversions are already in the roulette I meant how is in like, post where in the like, which is just character update IIRC. Yeah, character update, they just posted there. Yeah, citizen levels can be um, rebuilt into a adventuring class level. So any core class, any splat book and class. And wealth and loans. Yeah. Do we want them to take on the starting equipment slash wealth from one of their chosen normal classes? I think they can choose to take on a loan. But they get to choose to take on the loan. Because as a citizen, if they're converting their slot, they should already be... Uh, one, they already gain class wealth. The citizen class gives them wealth. Um, two, they, at this point, probably have already spent downtime, they've already probably built a wealth source. So unless they're a fresh citizen, or they've just had bad luck with downtime, or just didn't focus on wealth generating downtimes, they should have money to afford their equipment. I think the only thing that we would say would be allowed would be to give them a free uh, shopping day to buy their equipment. Ah, true. Actually, now that I think about it, give them a free opportunity to sell off their stuff and shop. Yeah, give them a the free shopping option. Um, just as if they are making a new character. So, no major wibbly wobbles. Well, may, okay, maybe not that, because they might have a fuck ton of items that can be sold for really quick. Free shopping days. The act is shopping days. Could do uh, similar to how, like, we... It's funny, but kind of makes sense. Selling off your career to chase an adventuring dream. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, you could do similar to how we're doing the travel days, right? Mm -hmm. And, like, convert your days over to shopping to allow them to, you know... Mm -hmm. That could work. Like, 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 get prepared, right? For, like... like like adventuring because at least then it's both organic because now they're they're going hey i i, I finally got gotten over my fear of dying to the goblin that's gonna pop out of the tree over there and <laughs> beat me to death i'm gonna go buy some armor mm -hmm. i can see that i'm insane for being a, for being an adventure there is no sane ad adventures I can see that where we convert the bonus civilian slot days to um, obviously the we'll have to look at the days and be like you can convert this many days but like mm -hmm. yeah like they can't convert their entire 45 days into you know 
sh shopping or yeah. how many days. I was just say the bonus there. days. Yeah. So like if we're giving them thirty, they would get a niche, a fifteen shopping mercantile days. Um. that does come into the question of one uh, Joe keeps not sure if we want to allow them to do mercantilism uh, and two what if they've already spent their civilian days for the time period it's also true but that but that does also go into the thing of uh, going back to what you said if you know you're going to be, become a adventurer you should be prepared to become an, 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 an adventurer yeah like it, it, it's not to be an, like it, like an asshole about it it's also like if you know you're going to become an adventure and we're also now awarding ddt days every three months you now have a timeline in which you can plan it's true we also tend to drop um player slots during downtime drops it, 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 so i don't think it's gonna be an issue it's exactly. gonna be more of like a niche case where it'd be really weird yeah. Um the old the only bad case I could see that is like say for example, um a full time DM offers a slot to a sieve to become an, an adventurer, then you can make the argument, well, I just spent all my days. Like Yeah. Eh, that's where that that oh, yeah. way Tie it to the room. next time progression, same as our character returning system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I uh that way the only wiggle room niche we niche we have to worry about is like if someone offers a slot to upgrade yeah other uh, uh otherwise we have a set way on how we make people in ventures yeah i think we just tie it to tp updates and then it'll work out well and then as you're saying the very niche cases would be yeah. uh probably just give them like five days they can use the shop Plus, uh, I'm sure a lot of the civs have some connection, or if they're going to be joining someone, they'll, you know, people have gold. Yeah, people will give them equipment, but uh, yeah. in the niche cases, giving them some to get personal items, I think it's fine. Just like a quick five days. Something to be able to buy some basic items, maybe something fancy, but nothing too crazy. And no selling for the, the niche cases. Because mm -hmm. uh, Jokey is right. If they, if they have... A stockpile of stuff. Yeah. And they're not gonna they're gonna be uh adventurers soon. They're already gonna be spending their days selling. Look at you Templar with your fucking four K gold of reagents. <laughs> but uh but, 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 but again, that is a that is a niche case. Not not everyone is going to have that. It's true. But it does or help. Or even us. equipment loans. Yeah. Like take on the standard class equipment for half the GP value in debt. We would have to add that in because we kind of took that away. I feel like the guild would subsidize that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think we can we can have the debt option for them because we will have potential citizens who join um, and then are given the roulette the next downtime, and then are like, wait a second, I'm not, I don't have enough money for this. Yeah. So, it, I can see it happening. So if we give them the option to go into debt, I think that's fine, but it should just be an option. At, 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 at least this way, uh, the civs going into an adventure have a better time trend Positioned over without it essentially getting fucked over. Yeah, so I think if we for the loans we can make it as you're saying they're like see specifically equipment, they don't get just gold, and it's half value in debt, um, and it is given from base market price rather than the fluctuating market price that we have. Um, one of the big things that are going to be in the update is the book is just showing the the base unmodified non-modified by market price so we'll need to make sure that the base market price is that plus 50 percent whenever we do do this thing so um on the market page the market spreadsheet we're working on for the economy side of things that will just list 50 percent when you're doing it
I mean, if it's the guild giving it to them, I can see it being just base price. But it really depends, because if we, makes sense. yeah. I'll think a bit about this and get a write-up whenever we add in the conversion guidelines. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. I could see the 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 guild handing them a uh, like a surplus package, going, "Hey, welcome to adventuring. Don't die. Here's a here's a sword." Mm -hmm. All right. Um. I think we're good on that topic. Uh, is there anything else on the docket or things people would like to bring up? One more thing before general balance stuff. Okay. Revelry downtime activity is missing effects based on lifestyles, and I'm not sure where the table is. Gotta go grab that thing so I know what you're talking about. Also, yeah, like, a lot of civs can, you know, repay most of their debt pretty quickly. Like, you're you're still getting, like, a solid 400, 500 gold from missions or more. Huh. Just off the, the, the base alone. Uh, add it to my docket so I can update it. Apparently it's it's missing and I will need to look through my notes to find it. And by that, I mean just... At me in Firehouse, and I'll mark it as in red. You know, I just realized this entire time the thing's been focused on uh, Firefox. There we go. It's fixed. Just scroll up. I think the last thing they saw was right about. No, too far. It was right about here. Okay. There we go. Um, anything else on the docket? Thanks to bring up. Okay, general balance stuff. I'm gonna go load up the suggestion form while y'all look through the form and balancing. Let's see. Oh my goodness, so many questions I have. Fine. Everything's fine. Oh, um, the the thing you added me about for that, um, the unchained classes are still a work in progress. Uh, they're not. No additional unchained classes have been worked on at this point in time, just because I'm focusing on the equipment guide. But they are on the docket. Equipment guide's pretty pretty close though, so it's close enough that I'm like, hey, there's on world anvil, so by the time I'm done with certain things, you guys will already be on the part where I'm working on. If I need to ballpark the progress of equipment guide, I'd say it's about eighty percent. Maybe eighty five. I'm like three weapon types left for weapon crafting rules, and then weapon crafting's done. And that's. Once that's done, I just need to start slapping in uh, magic item crafting, the stuff I have in a different document, into this guide. And uh, it's really close. Oh, um, since we're on that topic. Uh... Since you are bringing back exotic, we need to put that on the docket of we need to uh, go through origins and stuff to change the exotic prof. Yes, definitely. For 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 like classes and origins that we had previously changed because we didn't have it. Yeah. Any any uh, origin of the like that says I get proficiency in will weapon of my choice um, or I get proficiency in martial weapons, you can say that they instead get proficiency in an exotic weapon or one weapon of the choice if they prefer that option. Okay. Um, so we'll have to go through the origins and the uh, yeah. factions that, that, that say that. Is uh is there exotic armor or just weapons in the guide? Uh, let me go bring it up because I don't remember. 
just to like make sure we get it all done. Loading. Crafting, crafting, armor crafting. All right. Uh, nope, just standard light, medium, heavy armors. Okay. Just making sure. A basic is just the tool you use to craft another tool. It's essentially, um... You are in Stone Age, you need something to be able to make the other tools. So that's the only reason why that tool exists, because some tools required themselves to make, and it was impossible to do that without having, you know, the basic tools. So, I wouldn't say basic tools should have a profession tied to it. Mm -hmm. They're still not on call, are they? That explains it. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would say for this uh, professional document, I'm going to need to go and do suggestions for it because there's some of these that I'm like, They'll need to be beefed up a little bit, or need to be, um, just a little bit. So, just because there are certain professions here that would make sense to have alternative options. <laughs> All right. Who could you? Chew. You leave caveman per per profession alone. Clearly he knows how to bonk well. What is that? Legacy. Master Fever Poison. Let me copy it over one sec. Do we have that beat up on World Anvil? I think you do. I think I do too. Let's see your feats. Wasn't this a suggestion to fix it so that it made poisoners, uh, like, useful? Yeah, because I know someone wanted it to be updated for, um, like, Chef, so it tied into mm -hmm. the updates for Master Tools, which we did. Poisoner. I think Poisoner was tied more towards... Okay, no, Poisoner should be updated with the, the updates. Yeah, no. It just isn't yet. We only did Chef. I haven't got two poisoners yet. Sure. Um, so yeah, poisoner should is on the dock to be updated to be the uh, master style of feats. Oh, um, I do have the th set up for half feats that we need to convert over. That that have not that have not all already been changed over. That. Mm -hmm. That do need change to remove us. That there's already a thread and balance. Cool, 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 cool. We just need people to go over them because that was what me and Chrono were working on forever ago. But uh, things changed. Mm -hmm. uh, the only one that doesn't need changing is honestly like Elven Accuracy. You just remove the stat because it's. Of an accuracy, it's triple advantage. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, we do need to change those because we do have some people that do have half beats. 
and uh, we got to kind of take care of that. And then uh, once we get those out of the way, we'll work on converting over feats from uh, the other stuff. Oh yeah, general trainee news working through their downtime trainings now. Can you pass me your availabilities for around two weeks from now for teaching them advanced downtimes and crafting NERP? Not yeah. sure how long that'll take, or if you want to do it live or in text with them. I prefer uh, voice with them. But if, if like they need a to... text, then I can just they message me, I message them back whenever I can. It'll be like an ongoing thing. Um, in terms of availability, though, uh, I'm most available Wednesdays and Thursdays in the uh, afternoons. You can uh, also ask uh, Kismet to help there, as they are, uh, they've are they been doing the DDTs for crafting and stuff as well. It's true. Kismet's pretty good at crafting. Mm -hmm. So if you uh, you can ping them both, then you can get help. They have been asking me a lot of questions on how to craft and stuff, too, so they they got decent I also just believe, of it. I also believe Kismet is on the training team already. Mm -hmm. I know Moraz is. I, I, they are, yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. I need to ping Moraz to uh, give our DMs interviews because I don't have time. Yeah. You know, uh, voice is preferred. So. You know, uh, Wednesday, Thursdays tend to be most open. Um... Monday, Tuesdays, I'm classing it up, and weekends are pretty busy for me, so Wednesday, Tuesdays are our best. Uh, Fridays, generally any time before 6 CST. Assuming it's in the afternoon, because I tend to sleep in. Yeah, that is the intention. I want to get people trained up and ready to go sooner than later, so. The faster we can get people ready to go, the better. I also believe we're up to... The three that are in All the right, docket. so the Poisoner thing. We already plan on giving it a mastery update, yes? Yeah. I didn't realize someone wrote it up already, so I'll, I'll be giving that a look over uh, when I go up to the feet, which I'll probably be doing um, today, soon. So I was intending to go and put up the uh, spell research after this meeting, so I might as well do it then. Um. Yeah, this was a community submission from the form. Very mm -hmm. nice to have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where is the base form, by the way? So I can look at the results because I I don't know where you put that in the uh, the Google Drive because I always just look at it from what you tell us is on it. I, I don't know where we put that particular folder. That particular form. In ledgers? Probably in ledgers. I'll toss it over. It's probably in ledgers. Anyways. Um, yeah, no. I, I, I have... I will be updating Poisoner. Feet review. We, uh, I believe they already removed the ones that were uh, turned into like the armor training. Mm -hmm. For with uh, with um, martial training feet. Uh, those are the current ones that we allow via the books that you allowed that mm -hmm. we don't have that do need changed. Gotcha, gotcha. And that's what's posted in a uh, firehouse. Uh. Also like editing videos. Uh, uh what's what's what? Oh no. Uh, I'm gonna post that virus. Very uh, much preach. Yep. But there's like I think like nine or eleven we have to go through, which is. Not a lot, like it's... Eh. Yeah, it's not that bad. I'm probably going to be doing a, a major feat update soon, because I'm feeling particularly creative, so I might do some feat work. 
give myself a break from uh, from equipment work, which has become sluggish. Mostly because we uh we do need uh to get the half feet out of the way and then worry about the other ones later. All right. Mm -hmm. Anything else for the general meeting? I got nothing. Anyone else? There we go. Uh, remember to check Firehouse for uh, going over the classes as well. <laughs> when you have time, obviously, not like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my plan was to probably tomorrow, um, after class, to update Ashen finally. Because you're, what, it's only like uh, two subclasses that need... Yeah, I think it's just two, at that, yeah. At this point? Okay. Yeah, I think it's just the two. And then I'll have the... Uh... All right, take care, everyone. Happy Daylight Savings Day. Time to feel weirdly tired for the next few days. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'll have the uh, I'll have the fifth subclass to you here. Like, it's 85% done, and I was not sure what to do with the last two. Gotcha, course. gotcha. No problem, the, no problem. But the... Although the the rest of it has been changed to fit the uh, field class and the wording. Nice. All right. Cool, cool. Anything else? All right. Well, good meeting, everyone. Hope you guys all have, as Legacy like says, a good time wibbly wobble rest couple days. Um, small update looking at that. Very nice. Good update. Appreciate any help and all that good stuff. Um, uh, just note for the Tyrus Academy, give it some form of benefit to spell research. That definitely needs to be a thing. Yeah, cool. Excellent. Appreciate. Um, other than that, though, uh, I think we're good to call the meeting here. I was at the recording. All that good stuff. Appreciate all the help, all the good work, and whatnot. And, uh, blah, blah, blah.